Army Training Center and Fort Jackson for the retirement review of two soldiers and graduating of companies A, B, C, D, and E from the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Carl Chiotto. Let us pray. Let us pray together. Lord, we are thankful for all you do for us every day. We are especially thankful for being with us for the past 10 weeks as we conducted training together. Today is a special day for these new soldiers, a time of recognition of hard work and an accomplished mission. We give you thanks that you have given them the integrity and strength to make it through this far. Give them a sense of pride in their accomplishment. We thank you for their families and friends who have supported them, most of who are seated here this morning. Bless them, we pray. Remind these great soldiers that in each of their futures, you are interested in their success, and they are never alone in their journey. Lead them as they begin a new chapter in their lives so that they may confront all the storms and battles of life with their heads held high. Help them to do their duty to the United States Army, our great country, the United States of America, and to one another. Your strength enables us to protect others, and your providence keeps us safe. Help us to turn our hearts towards you each day, even as we continue to be who we are, the rock force. In the name of the almighty God, we pray. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the careers of two lifelong soldiers and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, and never quitting, and never leaving a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of CW3 Kevin Pick. The graduating soldiers from Company A, B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Company C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of the troops for today's ceremony is Major Michelle Walker, who serves as the executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment. She and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel John P. Wanya. 
On his left is Command Sergeant Major Jose D. Torres, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all Armed Forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as the National Anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of two lifelong soldiers. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 20 years ago, these soldiers took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States will be presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. 
I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the Army forces and the purpose for which you serve. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for your happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to those retiring today and to the spouses of today's retirees for their dedicated service to our nation. At this time, Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Blyler will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. Sergeant First Class Felicia Harris, having served honorably for 20 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 July 2023. Sergeant First Class Harris entered active duty in Beckley, West Virginia, and will reside in Blythewood, South Carolina upon retirement. Her fondest professional achievement was serving as a drill sergeant. The nation salutes. Felicia Harris, Sergeant First Class, United States Army Retirement. Sergeant First Class, Ronica Moses, having served honorably for 20 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 July 2023. Sergeant First Class Moses entered active duty in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and will reside in Columbia, South Carolina upon retirement. Her fondest professional achievement was being able to service the U.S. Army for over 20 years, teach, train, and mentor over 3,000 senior NCOs from all around the world as a logistics instructor at Army Logistics University. The nation salutes Ronica Moses, Sergeant First Class, United States Army, retired. Please join me in a round of applause for our retirees and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle for Bravo Company, 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Drill Sergeant Thomas, will recite the drill sergeant creed. We ask that all drill sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed.
capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I will instill pride in all our trade, pride in fellow, in the army, and the country. I will lead by example. I'll never require a soldier to attempt any task I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Wanya and Command Sergeant Major Torres will now present the awards. The Outstanding Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for 334 Infantry Battalion is Drill Sergeant Lisa Thomas from Torrance, California. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Alpha Company is PFC Joseph Chavez from Fontina, California. The Soldier of the Cycle for Alpha Company is PV2 Irupi Atule from Wahiwa, Hawaii. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Bravo Company is Private Jessica Tomala from Reno, Nevada. The Soldier of the Cycle for Bravo Company is Private Vanessa Badeline from Garland, Texas. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Charlie Company is PFC Herberto Rivas from San Jose, California. The Soldier of the Cycle for Charlie Company is PV2 Aaron Evans from Prosper, Texas. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Delta Company is Specialist Mark Phelps from Schoolcraft, Michigan. The Soldier of the Cycle for Delta Company is Specialist Royce Hill from Houston, Texas. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Echo Company is Specialist Connor Cook from Boise, Idaho. The Soldier of the Cycle for Echo Company is PV2 Logan Thomas from Alito, Texas. The NCO of the Cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Sergeant Danielle Gathers. The Soldier of the Cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Specialist William Watson. The Civilian of the Cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Mrs. Valerie Price. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel John P. Wanya.
Check one, check. Okay, I, pa I passed the first test and I didn't break the microphone. So we're, we're looking good, y'all, we're looking good. So ladies and gentlemen, if you were here for Family Day yesterday, it is my distinct honor to welcome you back. If this is your first time here, welcome to Fort Jackson and Hilton Field. Before I continue on with my remarks, I would like to recognize a few of our distinguished guests. This morning, we are joined by the Commanding General of Fort Jackson, Brigadier General Kelly and Mrs. Kelly. Sir, ma'am, thank you for being here. We are also joined by the commander of the 165th Infantry Brigade, uh, Colonel Solheim and Mrs. Solheim. Sir, Trina, thank you for being here. And we have with us the Command Sergeant Major of the 165th Infantry Brigade, Command Sergeant Major Blyler. Sergeant Major, as always, thank you. This is, uh, this is gonna be a joyous day, y'all. It really is. Um, but before I start talking about the men and women of the hour, there's a few more people uh, I would like to recognize. I would be remiss, of course, if I didn't recognize um, the 282nd Army Band, who always brings page you know, pageantry and distinction to every event that they play at. So please give them a round of applause. <laughs> and of course, we would not be here for one special population amongst us today, one group of individuals that has given us the blanket of freedom that we enjoy day in and day out. And I'm talking about our veterans and our retirees. For all veterans and retirees of our armed services, if you would please stand where you are and be recognized, we owe you our freedom. Thank you. The last group I'm going to talk about before we talk about these remarkable new soldiers out here are the individuals that got them there. I'm specifically talking about those remarkable non-commissioned officers in the United States Army called drill sergeants. You see, I can throw out a bunch of statistics this morning and tell you about the hours that they put in, the training that they have to be experts in, but the bottom line is I will tell you that the men and women you see are in those campaign covers that the narrator was talking about, the distinct headgear notice campaign covers, that they are in the top like 1% of their respective military occupation specialties. They work longer hours than you could probably imagine, and they do it for one reason and one reason alone, because they want to make sure our country is safe, and they see themselves in your sons and daughters, your husbands and wives, these 447 soldiers that are getting ready to graduate today. So years ago, they were them. They see themselves in those new soldiers, and they are not gonna let them fail. So I would tell you, it's gonna be a remarkable day. There's gonna be a lot of emotions on this field when we let you go down and reunite with your soldier. But if you have a chance, I would ask you, please thank the drill sergeant for what they do. Now, Let's talk about the men and women of the hour. These 447 new U.S. Army American soldiers. You see, they come from the population of the 55 million Americans who are within the ages of 18 to 27. So that's our primary recruiting pool. But out of those 55 million Americans between that age group, only about one in four is physically, mentally, morally able to serve in our United States military. And out of that 25%, only one in 100 actually does. Do the math, ladies and gentlemen. 1% of one quarter, and less and less are stepping forward to serve our nation. That tells you how remarkable they are. I will tell you, they come from big cities like New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, Houston. They come from small cities like Truth or Consequence, New Mexico, Standpoint, Idaho, Littleton, New Hampshire. The oldest new soldier we have out on this field is 40. The youngest is 17. They were born. Many of them were born overseas. 
We have new soldiers on this field who were born in Russia, Peru, the Philippines, India, Kenya, Lebanon, Cameroon, Mexico, Libya, Jamaica, Haiti, Ecuador, Belize. I'm going to read them all, ladies and gentlemen. Uganda, Trinidad, South Korea, Haiti, China, American Samoa, Vietnam, France, Costa Rica, Colombia, Japan, Thailand, Nigeria, Senegal, Guyana. On this field, we have 22 associate's degrees, 27 bachelor's degrees, six master's degrees, and a PhD. We have two former sailors, one former airman, two current EMTs, two current firefighters, one sheriff's deputy, and a school teacher, all out here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your United States Army. So you may be asking, well, what did it take to get here? I'm about to tell you. These 447 graduates had to execute 13 separate live fire rifle ranges, three field training exercises, had to rappel down a 40-foot wall, had to low crawl in wet sand the length of a football field at night under live machine gun fire to be here. The whole time, they were eating MREs. For you veterans, you know how tough that can be. But here's the real kicker. This is the toughest part. This is the hardest thing they had to endure. Anybody want to guess? We only let them use their smartphones for 30 minutes a week. That's how you make an American soldier. All joking aside, their accomplishments are not small. These are remarkable young men and women. So if you would allow me, I'm going to turn to my soldiers now and address them. Men and women of the Rock Force Battalion, my Rock Force family. Tomorrow, many of you are going to move on to your advanced individual training, and we probably won't see each other again. But before you leave, I'm going to make you a few promises today. Promise number one, so long as you wear that uniform, you will likely never be famous. Promise number two, so long as you wear that uniform, you will likely never be wealthy. Promise number three, so long as you wear that uniform, you will miss holidays, birthdays, and anniversaries. Promise number four, though, when the day comes that you hang that uniform up, you will be able to say, because of your efforts, we brought hope to the hopeless. We brought light to dark. And because of your efforts, freedom will never perish from the earth. So good luck, take the beach, strike strong, and victory. Today's soldier, above all, a warrior, adaptive, competent, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldier's Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private Jessica Tomala presents a certificate of appreciation to the retirees and leads the soldiers standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed.
In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier on the field once instructed by the narrator by respective company. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Michelle Walker and the battalion staff. The 282nd Army Band is commanded by CW3 Kevin Pitt. The drum major is Sergeant First Class Corey Walton.